Thanks for staying with us. Now, state governments have said, look, we do not trust the, the uh, social register of the federal government. They think it has integrity issues and they would prefer to go with the state's registers, um, or to create their own registers in their state, um, peculiar, which is pe will be peculiar to the needs of their people. But let's talk about that. What does data suggest in terms of uh, you know, creating social registers in the country? We have is, uh, an IT expert, Stephen Adetutunia. He joins us um, in the studio. Good to have you join us. Thank you. Let me start by getting your thoughts on this controversy surrounding the integrity of the um, social register created by the Buhari administration. Was it something that as an IT expert, you, you also, you know, um, saw that, look, this is not, because we do not have, you know, as you, you know, those of you who are IT experts have said, credible data um, collection in the country, collection process in the country, that perhaps there is an integrity issue with that register. Okay, first and foremost, I disagree completely about the challenging the integrity of the register. Mm. So I think let's first set the right, the right baselines. Uh, what exactly is the social register and its origin? It's not a Nigerian invention. Social registers, it's not a Nigerian. It's, been, it's dated about the 1960s. And it's not technically just a database. It's an information system. And for those of us in computing, we call it a living information system. Now, these, uh, I would love to personally put it that this is one of the best uh, data science projects we've done in this country when it comes to this register. It was designed by international parameters and metrics, uh, geographical targeting, community-based targeting, and a formula that is not an Nigerian formula called the proxy main test. And uh, just to put it in context, uh, because I'm very, I'm concerned why these states are asking this question. This formula, this register was not built by the federal government. The register was built by the state's Ministry of Planning, but technically facilitated by the National Social Safety Net Coordinating Office so they, and they supported states, by so World Bank. So the states were also involved. Exactly. In short, they, 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 were, they were the major players. In short, the guys, that, the enumerators, as we call them then, that went to the field, they were appointed from the state trained by NASCO, that's by NASCO, NASCO, they were trained by NASCO. So then there are some patterns we saw when this register was being prepared. And the reason why I said is that this register is a living register is because it's evolving. Uh, when it's, it's not just some database where you collect and store data. It's data science. And it's a project that we've meticulously, meticulously observed that was done perfectly, at least to near perfection. Because uh, apart from the fact that it was built by the states themselves, because I was hearing this from the NEC, and there are some that are two times governors in the NEC. So which means they, they know. Also, also they know, yes. And I'm wondering, are these guys not going to talk? Like, you, couldn't, you can't confirm that you made this register. It was only facilitated on the national level and supported by World Bank. And you see, the integrity of this data, because of the standard that was followed using data science techniques, uh, the United Nations have used this our register. Some arms of the United Nations have used it. Some states, now that are requesting the one their own register, have used it. as Lagos, I think Jigawa have also, they've used it. This same register to intervene socially. Now, uh, I think the problem is the application of this information system called the National Social Register. Implementation, that's the problem they have. How do we implement these social programs and they don't trust the federal government to use the register to implement. And now they say they want to use their own register. Let's first get Do, the facts. Does that worry you that the states want to now create their own register, which might not be based on the data science that you just mentioned? Uh, no, you know, I, I, I'm 100% sure they will not advocate creation. Because if they have to create creation of this kind of national social register that we currently have, it's an elaborate process. For example, the tools that were used to collect this data are internationally certified tools, like Kobo Collect. I'm letting you know the kind of tools. The, the enumerators that went to the field are were well-trained. The procedures for geographical targeting, community-based targeting, requires you to index the local government in each state based on their pover poverty ranking. Then the community-based 
target and requires you to group each community in the local government, the poor and impoverished in the local government, into men, women, and youth, and they decide what poverty means to them. So it, it was an international strategy. It's not, it's, not something that was, it's not something that was invented by Nigeria. They designed what poverty means to them, which is relative to different community. And this data is collected from the different states with different definition of poverty across the community. Then the data science tactics is now applied. The data is cleansed. The quality of data is guaranteed. Then the data begins to evolve. As of 2020, we had about 15.5 million approximately on that, data, on that data set. As of 2021, it grew to like 30 million approximately. As of 2022, it grew to like 46 million. Now as of 2023, we hear it's not about 61 million. So you can see they've been working on this data scientifically. Not if, if the state governments decide to go with, I don't know how they are going to create their own data because they say they understand the peculiarities of their people more than the federal government. If they decide to go with what they understand as the peculiarities of their people and decide to do their own you know, so, um, social register, not based on data science, what do you think will happen? Okay. Uh, you're going to let me de demonstrate my trust bias now because now this is not science. Uh, you see, the problem we have in Nigeria is trust deficiency. We are a trust deficient society. And it has now been obvious at the leadership where they don't trust themselves to. The leaders in the council, they don't trust themselves. And it applies to every one of us too. You know, you are dealing with an artisan, you know this thing is 400, it's going to charge you 2,000. You, you also don't trust. So we are a trust deficient society. And first, I, I believe because the registrar the register at the central level is an aggregate of all the state registers. So I'm sure they're not trying to create a new one. They want to use their own aggregate in their state. Because I'm sure they won't, they won't embarrass us as a country that much. But if they, if they well, maybe not, the trust maybe problem maybe not would embarrassment, come if they decide that use the, let's now go to local government by local government and, and ask, start all over start again. All over, maybe not with data science, just say who, how many people do you have there, you know, that are not, just, you know, some, some, uh, some by some the, arrangement. The, the, first, the, first, the first thing we expect them to do is publish your methodology that you want to use in your state. I've heard analysts argue that the absolute poverty index is 63%. And they use that to correlate with the Nigerian population and say this, the, the absolute poverty index metrics is different from a social register metric. So if they create their own, we are going to be back to the same problem of trust and misimplementation. You see, the problem is not the register. In short, the problem is not even particularly the implement, it's the value chain transparency. When they say they want to transfer cash, mm. but everyone is conscious that there's no transparency and accountability. Now, uh, let me describe what value chain transparency means. In layman's term, in very crude term, you see, this cash transfer, some people misunderstand it as cash and out, meaning they are giving you this money to go. No, that's not what it means. It's, it's an economic strategy where you transfer cash through the value chain of the economy. You give the rural market woman. For example, as they are claiming 8,000 naira, uh, she used that money to feed the family because that's, not, that's nothing. That money is nothing. Mm. But she, at least she buys rice to feed her children. The rice seller in the community see my demand for my rice has gone up. Then she gets to buy more bag of rice. The value chain has crossed to her. Now the farmer in the, in the farm see my demand for rice has gone up. Then she is here to order for more fertilizers. I'm using layman's now. Mm. The value chain has crossed to him. The business that is manufacturing fertilizer, see, demand for fertilizer is going on, going up. Then it gets to, okay, good, I produce more, make more money, and pay more taxes back to government. It's a value chain strategy. Now, the problem we have is we don't have a value chain transparency system in this country. We don't have a value chain transparency system in this country. So we're going to be back to the same problem. Let them cook up the register in any way they like, using data science or using common sense. And so, let's see how you go. I am going to bring you back because okay, um, time is up. Okay. I will have to bring you back because right. Nigerians need to understand exactly what you're saying. It's quite an interesting conversation. And I wish we could talk about the, the monitoring process that would ensure transparency, like you said. But time is up. Very interesting conversation with you there here, as always. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. IT expert, Stephen Adetutunia. You're welcome. All right, that's um, Start Point today. Remember, you can watch a repeat broadcast at 11 p.m. tonight and 5 a.m. on Sunday morning. I am Precious Amayu. Thanks for watching.